All right, Canadian auto parts maker Linamar delivered an earnings beat in the last quarter, driven by strong results in its industrial segment. The company also announced the launch of a new giga casting facility for electric vehicles in Welland, Ontario. We'll uh, digest all these results and the announcement with Linda Hassenfrash. She, of course, is CEO of Linamar, and she joins us remotely. Linda, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. All right, let's start with the new Giga casting facility in, in Welland, Ontario. My understanding is it's going to, to produce large structural parts for electric vehicles. In, in the press release, you said this, this puts Linamar in a leadership position in North America. Can, can you explain how? Yeah, absolutely. We're really excited about this new plant uh, right here in Ontario. Uh, it is uh, an investment in what they call Giga high pressure die cast uh, equipment. Giga referring to just very large size. So anything over kind of 5,000, 6,000 ton uh, of a press is considered Giga. Uh, and it is newer technology. We are the first supplier in either North America or Europe to invest in this technology, which, uh, as you noted, is really critical for lightweighting electric vehicles. So we're, uh, we're really excited about having this technology available to the market. Of course, with this a project of this scale, that does mean higher um, capital expenditures. It also, according to an analyst note I was reviewing this morning from BMO, added operational complexity. How do you address some of those, some of those questions and concerns? Yeah, uh, the CapEx is absolutely right in line with uh, our uh, expected normal level of CapEx spending. So we normally spend about 6 to 8% of sales on uh, capital for new programs every year. It is what drives our continued double-digit top and bottom line growth. So uh, the investment in the facility uh, is well within uh, our uh, our capex spend for the year, so nothing abnormal uh, at all. Uh, it is high pressure die casting, which is a process that we're familiar with. So we already have a high pressure die cast facility in uh, in the U.S., uh, where we are you know currently casting again on large equipment, not as large as the giga plant will be, uh, but in the you know, 3,500, 4,000 uh, ton range. So not terribly different. So it isn't a uh, brand new technology for us. So we feel uh, quite confident in our ability to uh, efficiently launch this facility. All right, let's dig into your quarterly results, which which were just uh, were just announced. They're, they're hot off the press. Uh, your industrial sales rose some 29%, beating uh, analyst expectations. And you also noted that uh, you expect that segment to continue to to outperform what is what's driving that uh, for you guys yeah in the industrial segment which is made up of both our skyjack access equipment and our two agricultural businesses macdon and salford uh, have had a strong backlog of business based on strong demand in the marketplace it's been uh, a challenge to deliver that demand over the last year, year and a half because of ongoing supply chain issues, which we're starting to see improve somewhat. Uh, so that was certainly a factor in our ability to just get product out the door uh, this quarter. So great to see those supply chain costs mm -hmm. easing up uh, somewhat uh, and uh, allowing us to get um, get product to our customers. And, and I understand price increases were a piece of that as well. Are you are you are you experiencing any pushback on those price increases? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody is experiencing higher costs mm -hmm. uh, from a variety of uh, sources, whether it be from your suppliers, from you know energy costs, really more so in Europe. Uh, labor costs, you know, costs are going up across the board. So uh, it is uh, not surprising, that, therefore, that prices uh, have had to go up. So, I mean, nobody likes price increases. And, you know, we're always doing everything we can to try to reduce cost and be able to reduce prices uh, to our customers as well and stay competitive. But unfortunately, the reality of the situation is you need to, you need to do some of that. But I have to say that I'll 
although those uh, increased prices did help to cover uh, some of these supply chain uh, and other cost increases, the majority of the earnings growth in, in that industrial segment just came from uh, product sales growth and the great sales growth that we saw uh, in the quarter and our team being able to, to deliver the product. So. Uh, great to see that. So, so let's shift then to mobility. So sales and mobility were up, uh, if I'm not mistaken, something like 20, 21 uh, percent. That that was below what what analysts uh, were expecting from that division in in your quarter. Um, and my understanding is that part of that was due to margin pressure on lower production volumes in China. Perhaps you can expand on what was happening within that key segment. Yes, absolutely. So uh, Asia and specifically China saw a, a reduction in production volumes in the first quarter in comparison both to prior year and also in comparison to the fourth quarter of last year. Uh, and that was just based on as China opened up uh, with regards to the, the COVID pandemic, of course, there was uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, spread mm -hmm. that happened, and that had a big impact on uh, people coming to work, people getting out and buying product. Uh, so uh, production came down quite quite a bit, uh, and that was really a big drag for us in uh, in that uh, in that segment. Uh, we do expect to see China starting to recover in the second quarter. We're already seeing some signs of, uh, of recovery. So uh, we're hopeful that that is going to get um, better in the second quarter. And we do expect our mobility segment earnings to be higher in Q2 than they were in Q1 uh, of this year, which is good news. Uh, you know, big picture, just kind of final question for you. Big picture seems like the auto parts sector, you know, it's, it's been an interesting few years, to say the least. And it seems like uh, you and your peers are, are regaining momentum. But at the same time, we're at a very uh, seemingly precarious moment uh, in this economic cycle. So, so how do you square what you're, what you're seeing on the ground with all of the rather grim prognostications about the economy? Yeah, actually, I feel um, quite optimistic. I mean, we're still seeing inventory levels on the auto side quite low. I mean, normally we see inventory on vehicle lots up around 60 days. They're still sitting around 36, 37. Uh, that means that there's still, you know, demand uh, in uh, the market that's unfulfilled, uh, which is going going to keep uh, production levels rolling. Uh, we are seeing, you know, continued strong demand. Uh, so I think that's uh, that's a real positive. Uh, at the same time, at Linamar, we have quite a big book of business that we're launching. So, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing uh, uh, growth coming both from the market growing, which the market is expected to grow in vehicle, produ vehicle production levels this year, and also from our big launch book, I mean, we've got 750 to 850 million dollars of incremental sales coming from our launches this year. So uh, that is obviously a big driver of the growth. And then that any any market growth that we see just adds in on top of that. So we feel quite positive about growing our overall business at Linamar, top line and bottom line in double digits this year. And our mobility segment will certainly grow top line double digits, uh, and we're expecting growth on the bottom line uh, as well. So uh, we feel pretty good about where we're going this year and next year uh, in the overall business and in the auto side as well.